Armed with a refreshing approach and an unpredictable imagination, Dominic J. Marshall delivers true authenticity. We invited him for a Bud Is It Jazz session to present his new album entitled Triolithic. I'm Dominic J. Marshall. I'm a pianist, composer, beat maker from Wiltshire, England. The new album um, concept is a time when human beings hadn't considered ownership of natural things, um, which some people have said was the case in the Neolithic era, but we don't know much about that era because we don't have text. So I kind of just riffed off the idea and called it Triolithic because in my music I'm kind of trying to get back to that place of no ownership and communal sacred love. Can you feel it? Trio because trio is my favorite musical format really to work in. Originally it was going to be a bad play on words tree olithic but then I decided that was too corny. <laughs> <laughs> like the, the word tree. The name trilithic came after because the names of the songs are all quite varied. Some of them are more spiritual, some are historical and some are very very personal. That was the only thing that could really tie them up was a name like trilithic. Um, I developed the compositions with the guys, really, um, but they were born at the piano with me on my own. Um, I tend to deliberate, it, deliberate over it quite a lot before I put it on paper because then, to me, it's something definite. But once it's on paper, that means I can give it to the guys and, and we can run it and then it really starts to come to life. I guess it's various different styles all coming through one filter of the way I hear music. I've been playing my own compositions kind of from the start, from the very beginning when I did gigs. I think it, it partly stemmed from just feeling like I couldn't really do justice to the, the tracks which I listened to. You know, I used to listen to Stevie Wonder and Herbie Hancock, and to me they were like gods. So I'd never go on a gig and try to play their music because that would be like trying to dress up as God. So <laughs> I would more try and boil it down into a composition, what I was hearing, and then, like I said, put it through that different filter. But yeah, I've always played my own tunes. Call it jazz. Um, I'm I'm wary of calling my music anything. Um, so no, maybe I wouldn't call it jazz. Although I do think of myself as kind of a jazz musician, but 
I don't know what to call it. <laughs> no, I just... I don't really worry myself about that. Because if I start thinking about that, then, then I'm thinking in terms of concepts and, and um, categories. And that's all a bit damaging to the actual writing of the music. The music, to me, it needs to be free. So that's why I'm, I'm kind of nowhere in talking about genres and stuff. Because when I listen to Flying Lotus or D'Angelo... Uh, or Thundercat or Cinematic Orchestra, I don't really hear a genre. It's kind of like a summation of all of this great stuff that happened in the 20th century and went by like a whirlwind. You know, so much developed from Louis Armstrong up, up to um, Jay Diller. That's like... We're trying to recap that in a way, I feel. So there's no genre. <laughs> mainstream culture we're being handed on TV and on the radio and in magazines um, it's not really tuning into who we are as human beings um, so I feel it's very necessary for us to create another direction alongside that an alternative movement arts movement where we can put soul in it and we can do it how we want we're trying to make music so that's why I make music. All right, so this the last tune. Uh, it's called Blue Lotus, and it's again inspired by the ancient Egyptians. They used to use the blue lotus flower. Uh, they used to brew it with red wine, um, and it had a psychedelic effect. And they used to use that to contemplate life and death. Maybe that's why they knew so much. Yeah. 